Hey everyone, this is Ben with RegisteredNurseRN.com and in this anatomy lesson I'm going to cover the pelvic girdle which consists of the two hip bones. Now anatomists refer to these hip bones by different names including the oscoxy or coxal bones, the innominate bones, and the pelvic bones. Now the pelvic girdle is part of your appendicular skeleton and it serves to protect the organs in your pelvic region and it provides an attachment point for ligaments and muscles and it also attaches the lower limbs of the appendicular skeleton to the sacrum of the axial skeleton. And most anatomists today do classify the hip bones as irregular bones. However, I have seen a few anatomists in the past classify them as flat bones, so you might want to be aware of that. Each hip bone is divided into three main regions. The ilium, which is the brownish color in this picture, the ischium, which is the bluish color, and the pubis, which is represented by the pinkish color. Now these three regions begin as separate bones in youth, but they later fuse together to form one solid hip bone. And these three hip regions meet in and around the acetabulum, which is the deep socket of the hip bone. And the acetabulum is easily recognized in a lab exercise, and it receives the head of the femur to form the acetabulofemoral joint, a ball and socket synovial joint. And the word acetabulum sounds like acid tablets to me, and the word literally means vinegar cup. So I remember that this is the little cup of vinegar that I need to swallow my acid tablets. Now let's talk about each major region of the hip bone, starting with the ilium. And the ilium makes up the superior or top region of the hip bone, as you can see here. And it is named after a Latin word that means flank or entrails. The ilium can be subdivided into two main portions. You have an inferior or lower region near the acetabulum called the body. And then you have a superior portion which is fanned out called the wing or the ala of the ilium. Now if you feel the sides of your abdomen with your hand, you'll probably feel the top of that wing-like portion of the ilium called the iliac crest. And this allows for the attachment of various muscles. And an easy way to remember this is to think back to your nine abdominal regions. And these two lower regions are called the left and the right iliac regions. So that can help you remember this section of the hip bone. Now the iliac crest thickens around a small rounded projection called the tubercle of the iliac crest. And when we examine the nine abdominal regions, you'll notice that there is an inferior horizontal or transverse plane called the intertubercular plane. And it's named that way because this plane actually passes through the tubercles on each iliac crest. Now when we look at the anterior or front side of the ilium, you'll notice that it comes to two points or spines. The superior or top spine is called the anterior superior iliac spine. And it allows for the attachment of the inguinal ligament as well as the sartorius muscle. The anterior inferior iliac spine allows for the attachment of the rectus femoris muscle as well as the iliofemoral ligament of the hip joint. Now on the posterior or back of the ilium, we also have two more spines and they're going to be named just like the front two. You have a posterior superior, which means top iliac spine, which allows for the attachment of part of the posterior sacroiliac ligaments. And then below that, we're going to have the posterior inferior iliac spine. And again, just pay attention to those directional terms because that's what a lot of these structures are named after. Posterior means towards the back. Inferior means away from the head or toward the feet. And so that just helps you keep track which is superior, which is inferior. Now just under the posterior inferior iliac spine, you'll notice a huge notched out area which is called the greater sciatic notch. And this allows for the passage of the sciatic nerve. And this notch will help you identify the posterior region of the hip bone. Now when you're looking at the ilium from the lateral or side view, you can see these three distinct lines that are named after their relative directional terms. You have a posterior, an anterior, and an inferior gluteal line. And these lines provide attachment for the gluteal muscles. Now when you look at the medial or inner view of the pelvic bone, you'll notice that it has a large depression at the anterior region called the iliac fossa. Now the auricular surface is on the medial side of that posterior region of the ilium 
and this articulates with the sacrum of the vertebral column to form the sacroiliac joint. And then finally, we have a prominent line on the medial side that extends from the auricular surface down to the pubis called the arcuate line. And this line serves as a landmark that separates the body of the ilium from the ala or wing of the ilium. Now let's talk about the ischium of the hip bone, which is the lower rear portion or the posterior inferior region of the hip bone. And like the ilium, the ischium can be divided into two main regions. The body, which makes up that superior region of the ischium and forms approximately two-fifths of the acetabulum. And then the ramus, which is the branch-like structure that makes up that inferior portion of the ischium and connects to the inferior ramus of the pubis. Now on this posterior region of the ischium, you'll notice a projection called the ischial spine. And this allows for the attachment of various muscles and ligaments. Below the ischial spine is another notch called the lesser sciatic notch, and this allows for the passage of nerves and vessels. Next, we have the ischial tuberosity on the lateral side of the ischium, and this is a roughened bump that allows for the attachment of the sacrotuberous ligament as well as several muscles. And then finally, we have the last major section of hip bone called the pubis. And the word pubis means sexually mature, and by thinking of your pubic region and private parts, you can kind of remember that this is the area of the hip bone that is going to be on the anterior or front side. And like the ischium and ilium, the pubis also has a body, but it also has two rami coming off the body, which allow for the attachment of various muscles and ligaments. Now the superior ramus is the upper portion of the pubis that branches out. And there is a ridge on the superior border of this ramus called the pectineal line which allows for the attachment of various muscles and ligaments, and it also forms part of the pelvic brim, which I'll talk about more in a future video. And then the inferior ramus is gonna be that lower portion of the pubis that branches out. Now these two rami of the pubis join the ischium, forming a large hole in the hip bone called the obturator foramen. And the word foramen refers to a hole in a bone, and this is the largest bone hole in the human body and it allows for the passage of the obturator artery, vein, and nerve. And there's also an obturator muscle that attaches in this area. And I remember back in college, I had an anatomy professor who told us that to remember the obturator muscle, we can picture a guy running his hand up a girl's leg with the song playing, he's a smooth obturator. So I've always remembered that illustration. Maybe that can help you out. And on the anterior or front side of the pubis body, you'll find a rim of bone called the pubic crest, which allows for the attachment of the inguinal falx, as well as the abdominal, external oblique, and pyramidalis muscles. Now there's a small bump where the pubic crest laterally joins with the superior pubic ramus medially called the pubic tubercle, and the inguinal ligament attaches to this. Now the two pubic bones are joined together on the anterior side of the pelvis by a cartilaginous joint called the pubic symphysis or the symphysis pubis, which is a non-synovial amphiarthrodial joint. And directly underneath the pubic symphysis, you'll notice that the bones form kind of an arch or a notch, which resembles an upside down V. And this is called the pubic arch. And it has a much smaller angle in men than in women. And I'm going to compare and contrast the male and female pelvis in a future video. And I'll also talk a little bit about the true and false pelvi, so stay tuned for that. Okay, so that wraps up this video over the pelvic girdle and the hip bones. Now we have a free quiz that you can take to test your knowledge. Just click the link in the description below. In addition, we have a whole playlist of videos on anatomy and physiology here on YouTube and some notes and quizzes on our website, so you might want to check that out. Thank you so much for watching and please subscribe.